Hi, my name is Michael Werner and I play percussion at the Seattle Symphony. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about what it is I do with the orchestra and the instruments that I play and I wanted to primarily focus on the keyboard instruments. So the instrument right in front of us here is the xylophone and it has wooden bars made of rosewood and they're laid out just like the notes on the piano. So these are the natural notes or would be the white keys and then these are the accidental sharps and flats, the black keys. Now when we play it, we use these mallets, you can see here, and they have a variety of different heads on them depending on the sound we want to go for. So this is a softer mallet, it has a rubber mallet head. And then this one is plastic, a little bit brighter. And then this one is rosewood, just like the xylophone, and it's going to be even brighter still. So you've probably heard xylophone before in different things and maybe not even noticed it. It's actually used a lot in cartoon music, so like Looney Tunes. And there was a specific a uh, cartoon with Bugs Bunny where he comes out on stage and plays a xylophone that's been rigged by Daffy Duck and that one goes so he's waiting to, for it to be finished before the instrument actually ends up exploding so he comes out tries it again can't find it then Daffy Duck runs out and he finishes it and the instrument blows up. But one of the pieces that, that I picked to play today, I think reminds me a little bit about the energy that's in cartoon music, and it's by the Russian composer Shostakovich, and it's from his opera, Lady Macbeth. And I think it has a lot of excitement and drive, and you can almost imagine that there's cartoons that go along with it. And that goes like this. So something you may have noticed is that underneath these keyboard instruments you see these pipes that extend down and those are called resonating tubes. And what they do is they help sustain the wooden bar or metal bar on the vibraphone. And if I cover that tube it sounds like this. You can hear how much fuller the sound gets when the tube is open. And so each tube has to be a certain length so that the sound wave can go down and back smoothly without interrupting itself. So the next thing I would like to play is from Oliver Messiaen's Exotic Birds. He's a French composer and he was really into nature and birds specifically. And this piece, he transcribes actual bird songs from birds from North America, South America, and Asia and he has it put together it's with piano and small orchestra. And you get to hear these birds all in a place where they'd never be, which is together at once. And the bird I'm gonna be imitating is the California Thrasher.
next instrument that I wanted to show you is the glockenspiel or orchestral bells. And it's set up the same, laid out just like the piano, and it has metal bars. It's the highest in the register for us, and it has a really sustained sound. So one of the musical examples that I wanted to play is from the French composer Paul Ducat, and it's from The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which you probably recognize from the Disney Fantasia film with Mickey Mouse. And the first section is kind of early on when things are not completely out of control yet. And it's a section that goes and I play along with the winds. It goes like this. The next section I'd like to play is a little bit later in the piece when sometimes composers ask us to do challenging things and in this spot it's where things have really gotten out of control and I have to be able to move my hands very fast across the keyboard and that's going to sound and look like this. another uh, instrument and I only have one note with me here but that's the crotales or antique cymbals and it's little discs that are tuned to specific notes and it has the longest sustain of of any of our instruments The last instrument that I wanted to show you today is the vibraphone. It's laid out exactly the same as the other instruments we've seen, except that the notes are all on the same level to allow for a dampener pedal that runs below to be operated with the foot to get us to have long or short sounds. So when my foot is down, it's long. And if I put my foot up, let go, it's a short sound. The other big difference is that it has a fan blade that is above the resonating chamber. And so when I showed us earlier on the marimba, when I put that card there, it restricts the sound. And when I take it away, it's open. So when the fan is rotated like this, it restricts the sound and then it rotates and opens it, which gives us open, closed, open, closed, giving us that vibrato sound and thus the name vibraphone. It sounds like this. And you can see there that I'm operating the speed at which that happens with this little motor down here. A composer who used vibraphone in the orchestral repertoire was Leonard Bernstein, an American composer, and he uses that in West Side Story, which has uh, a lot of elements of jazz music in it, and I'll play two examples of that now. One of the things that makes playing percussion so much fun is there's so much variety in the instruments that we get to play. Today I primarily focused on the keyboard instruments or the pitched instruments, but there's many, many different types of instruments that we play. Some of them are small, like this tambourine that we hold in our hand. You may have played or seen one before. We can play it by striking it. We can play rolls. We can play finger rolls. So the thing that's fun is that a composer just writes tambourine in the part, 
And so we have a variety, 20, 30 different tambourines to choose from to find what we think is that perfect sound for that piece. Another small instrument that we play is the triangle. Same thing, they come in many different sizes and different beaters, but we strike it, play rhythms, and we can play rolls also. I started playing percussion when I was in first grade. And when I first started out, you start very simple with the basics, which I had a drum pad like this and some sticks and you're just learning how to play rhythms and read. And then after that, I really wanted to play drum set. So in order to do that, I didn't have a drum set at home. So I would practice on magazines that I stacked. And a drum set is made up of a snare drum, which is the brightest uh, drum in the grouping. And that was this magazine because it has a brighter sound. And then this one would have been my high tom. And then this stack of magazines here is the lower tom. And this bowl here is a ride cymbal. And then my foot would just go on the floor. And then I would use normally a bag or these are some brown bags to represent the hi-hat because those are symbols that click together. And then by doing that, I was able to practice all of my exercises. I could practice my Latin stuff. So you can see that if you're creative, even at home, I'd recommend the kitchen, great place to start. You can find all sorts of things that you can make percussion sounds out of. There are so many other instruments that we play as percussionists that I didn't even get to show you today, and hopefully I can at another time. But I'd like to finish by playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star using a lot of the instruments that we heard and learned about today. I hope you've enjoyed, and please check in every week to learn about a different instrument in the Seattle Symphony. Thank you so much. Sarah from the Seattle Symphony's Education and Community Engagement Team. I hope you enjoyed Michael's video today all about his amazing percussion instruments. I'm here to help you make your very own tambourine at home. Parents, there's a link to the information below. Feel free to pause the video and I'll be here when you're ready to help you put your tambourine together. Let's make a tambourine. Here's mine. Start with two paper plates. If you don't have paper plates, you can try this with a Tupperware container or even make a version for a toilet paper roll. Next, grab something to color and decorate your tambourine. Then ask your helper to help you measure one tablespoon of a dry good like lentils or rice or beans. And last, you'll need a stapler or some tape to put your tambourine together. Now it's time to color and decorate our plates. If we were going to eat from the plates, they would look like this. But today we're going to put the eating sides together to make our tambourine shape. So let's color and decorate the bottoms of the plates so that we're sure to see them when we're finished. Once you're done decorating, place your plate 
eating side up onto a table and pour your lentils onto the plate. Cover that up with your other plate, making the tambourine shape. And then ask your helper to help you staple or tape all the way around the edges of the plate so that the lentils are stuck inside. Once that's finished, you have your tambourine and it's time to see how it sounds. Let's shake them. Let's tap them. And let's put it all together in a cool rhythm. Hope you have fun making your tambourine today and we'll see you next time for more instrument crafts.